I started my career as a scientist in uh, 1982. I was 26 years old when I joined the industry. And uh, um, I would never have expected at that time that I would do anything else but doing some science in the industry. And um, for me, of it was then a significant step and experience moving out of science into a more business P&L driven environment, which only happened more than 20 years later. So I had my science driven environment where I felt competent and I felt comfortable. And I was put into a P&L business driven environment where I did not have all the competencies at the time to deal with. So I mean, so I had to learn that commercial aspects, um, financial aspects. So that was a challenge for me uh, to move out of my comfort zone into something I was not so familiar with. But I was lucky enough and fortunate enough to be put in a business which was very much science driven. So at least I could take some of that um, competence with me and could make use of it in the new environment. But still, to move out of, of, of science into a more commercial P&L driven environment was a big step for me. The other challenge that I had was when I left Novartis for a while and moved to, uh, to Bayer. Leaving a company after 27 or 28 years and moving to a new company is a significant step. Um, you have all your network, you have all your connections, you know how a company works. That's all very comfortable after 27 years. And to then start from scratch again in a new company where you, have, you don't know anybody, you don't know the culture, you don't know how it works, you don't know nothing. And prove to yourself that you can be successful in that environment as well, coming out of nothing, was a significant challenge as well. And, and the two companies do have different cultures. One is more aggressive, the other one is more family loyal. Uh, it's, all, it's all good and successful, but still, I mean, you come from one environment and you need to adapt to some extent in a new one, but you also want to shape the new one. So you have your own perspectives that you want to apply here as well. And, and that was a significant challenge as well. What you have as a scientist is a very fact, data-driven, pragmatic perspective on life. Um, show me the data and then I trust you. Okay? I, I, listen, I hear what you say, but show me the data. And I believe that is helpful in any kind of job. Uh, stick to the facts, be um, transparent, be clear, um, have your act together, show me the truth, and then we can, based on that, based on facts and figures and, and, and we can, we can have a discussion, but don't try to uh, convince me with nebulous, uh, nice PowerPoint driven um, buzzwords. Uh, show me the facts. And I believe that is an attitude that a scientist brings. It can be displayed by other people as well, so it's not the privilege of a scientist to be fact driven, but uh, it's at least how you are trained, and you will never forget that. You will, you will, this will always be part of how you act that you want to go down to the basics. You want to understand what discussion is all about and you want to get to that point quickly. So if you have a 250 slide presentation, what I always tell people is they need to expect that that presentation has been read before the meeting. And then it happens that in the meeting you go to slide number 125 immediately. So there is no presentation and you say it's fine, it's wonderful, but I saw something on slide 125 which I don't understand. Can you explain that? which is unusual for many people to deal with. But it's just the, it's, it's driven and influenced by the no-nonsense, no-bullshit kind of direct approach. And that I still have.